Okay, hello everyone. Foul play here and back for match four of this modern league. Hopefully we can uh, get some sort of consolation prize out of this whole thing. Uh, we did win the dry roll, so we are going to be on the play here. And that light's making everything worse. Yeah, obviously I've um, got a green screen and set that up, and now all the lighting's a little bit uh, off. I need better lighting and to have things going. Um, uh, <laughs> Alright, so opponents on a Gigantha deck. Could be Tron. Uh, we don't have a creature, so we're going to have to mold that. Alright, this hand looks much better. We're going to keep this. Alright, so we're going to keep this, and we've got a mulligan decision. Gigantha, it could be Storm, in which case, uh, or like humans, in which case Ley Line's actually quite good. think I'm going to risk it and get rid of the Hyena Umbra here. And uh, keep this Ley Line. It does buff my Ethereal Armor as well, so it's not all completely awful. Um, yeah, my opponent's uh, also having... A bad run of form at the moment. They are also 03 and uh, looks like they're a Tron deck here. Uh, so doesn't mind losing this. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go for as much damage as possible here. I could try and disguise the ethereal armor, play play the hyena umbra. I think we're just gonna need the damage here. Um, <laughs> no surprises here. Yeah. Well, looks like they have natural tron. They're going for natural tron, uh, or are they going for a blast zone? Because they already have it. Okay, so they've got Urza's tower now. Yep. So Spirit Mantle seems like a decent. Uh, it seems like a decent place to play the Spirit Mantle. If my opponent does get uh, Tron assembled next turn and they play Oblivion Stone, they can't quite get us. Um, they're one mana short of playing and cracking it. It costs a total of eight, so pretty safe to just play that. And if they can't get rid of Ethereal Armor, we can Hyena Umbra attack them. Um, we won't quite have Lethal. We'll need to draw another Aura, but we're in a decent spot. <laughs> just like how, how good's the rest of the hand um, mm, definitely places this could go wrong and ethereal armor I mean it's it's dealt a lot of damage here a lot more than what hyena umbra would have so it's already dealt an extra three damage so even if i miss out on a lot of damage from not attacking with it next turn it's it's already paid for itself uh being on the play <clears throat> so khan liberated uh i guess they're gonna get ethereal armor it's the most threatening aura. maybe they'll get spirit mantle and look to chump block next turn although that's they'll still be dead so yeah ethereal armor we can put them to one. It's not quite good enough. Um, I mean, this is good against everything except Ugin putting them to one, right? So let's just go for it. They could worm coil engine and crawl their way back into the game after that. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, sort of, sort of awkward right now. Mm. Maybe I just play the core spirit dancer, attack and kill Khan, and then look to kill them the following turn after that. I think maybe I took the suboptimal line. It's all about seeing what they do now. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't like my line. I think the Core Spirit Dancer Kill Khan line was better. Although, they've just cycled a star into a forest here, so that's kind of good for us. Ancient Stirrings now. So they get Urza's Tower off of that, but they've already played a forest for the turn, so they can't play the Tron land there off of that. Um, they can come liberated one of our auras. I, without Ugin, I just don't think they can do it. Maybe a Worm Coil can do it for them, but I think they're... Oh, they've got exactly enough mana for Worm Coil here. Don't they? Yeah, they do. What's the issue? Have they got Khan? Thrag Tusk. Okay. Main deck Thrag Tusk for all the burn or pra um, death shadow decks, I suppose. That's pretty good. We can put them to one again. Honestly, let's just attack them. I think I want this Griffspoon in hand. We're going to trample a couple of points of damage anyway. And this is worse against Khan plus Khan, but they're probably just going to take the Rankle with a Khan activation anyway, or the Core Spirit Dancer. <clears throat> Of course, they could just Ulamog and exile my everything. Uh, that'd be quite rude of them. Sylvan Scrying for Blast Zone. Blast Zone on one will destroy a lot of my stuff. And then I can look to attack and kill him next turn with the Core Spirit Dancer. Relic of Progenitus. Alright, so they're cycling that one. Looking to draw something relevant. Uh, or they might even just hold it to look to get the Rancor after blowing up the board. Oh god, they're tapping a lot of mana here. I don't like that. Worm Coil is fine. Um, Khan Attack Core Spirit Dancer is fine. Khan Attack Our Manor is fine. Alright. Well, that's not too bad. We can just fly over and win now. Play another Relic. I would have thought they would have wanted to have done that before they cast Khan in case they changed their mind. Um, so Daybreak Coronet here is one point off of killing them. So let's just go for what's lethal. We can trample uh, four damage over the beast, but we might as well just kill them, right? Okie dokie. So Tron Leyline's out. Path's out. Gadok Tig's in. Damping Sphere in. And Force of Vigor in. Am I actually short on cards? Yikes. It's a big yikes. Uh, Suppression Field's pretty good. Could also Hushbringer. Um, which would be good against Thrag Tusk, but I expect they're taking that out. If they, you see cards like Worldbreaker or Sundering Titan, you could potentially bring it back in. Um, yeah. Let's... Go with this. Or we could have one path over the suppression field for a worm coil engine. Yeah. Could be better. Could be better. Could be worse. I mean, I guess if they don't have natural Tron, it's worse. They do have natural Tron a lot of the time, though. Um... Think we keep this. Not amazing, though. 
Let's, let's keep. Daybreak's kind of good. If they have Tron into Worm Coil Engine, we're pretty set. Turn one map for our opponent. So if we draw a Force of Vigor here, uh, wouldn't be bad. Alright, no Force of Vigor. Alright, the old natural Tron from my opponent. Oh, it's not quite natural, they're using a map, but like, honestly, how hard have they worked for it? Like... <laughs> Alright, let's just go double aura. Uh, attack them. I guess if they uh, have Khan, they take the ethereal armor, then we can attack and kill the Khan. Ooh, Blast Zone's going to be a bit backbreaking. We do have the other Bogle, but I did commit two one mana auras, and we're out of one mana auras in hand. Um. Do they already have Blast Zone in hand, or do they have another map or another star to Sylvan Scrying into a Blast Zone? Seems odd. They had Khan mana and they had no big, nothing big to do with it. I mean, I guess I'll take it. It's a Daybreak Coronet here. I mean, I could play around Blast Zone with a Hyena Umbra. But I can just play another Bogle out of hand and reset on that Bogle with Hyena Umbra plus Daybreak in subsequent turns. So, still is okay. Not great, though. Yes, yeah, we have to... If we're thinking about our opponent's sideboards as well, they would have sideboarded out both Thrag Tusk and Relic of Progenitus, so there's a potential of, like, eight cards that they've sided out here. Ulamog? Yikes. Well, I don't think they have the mana to cast it this turn. They will have the mana next turn, though. Nine mana, or is it a giant walking ballista? That's not good enough. Ugin? Ugh. I mean, they always have Ugin, don't they? It's pretty gross. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Daybreak falls to the graveyard when the other cards are exiled. That's weird. I haven't seen that interaction before, or I haven't picked up on that interaction before. So, we are dead. We are very dead. So here comes the Ulamog. They're going to get two triggers here. They go after two of our lands. Uh, it's sort of interesting that they went after the basic planes. They're pretty far ahead, though. It shouldn't really matter for them. Um, if we do draw like a Windswept Heath, we can get Dryad Arbor... Instant speed, and then potentially attack and kill Ugin. Oh, Ugin's still super far off dead. Alright, so we lose that one because Ugin is just disgusting, right? It really is disgusting. Nothing about that card is okay, if you ask me. Uh, so, one of Path to Exile going out. <laughs> Ulamog is a cast trigger, right? It's not an ETB, yeah. Um, yeah, if it was if it was an ETB, Hushbring would be good, but because of it's it's a cast trigger, it's just not. 
Might just minus one spirit mantle and go with that. I did keep a hand with like no interactive pieces. Alright, I'm keeping this. Our lands are good, they don't hurt us. Uh, we have a turn two core spirit dancer, which is also really good. Um, we have a good diversity of different auras that have different effects. And core spirit dancer for a really good clock. So. Well, at least they've got a star, not a map, so they have to work for it somewhat now. Great. I mean, that's a really good draw. Damn. Uh, if this was the other... Cr the Chromatic Lantern would be able to upkeep, destroy it, so they don't get the green mana off of it. But because it's Star, we can't do that. With uh, Star, they get it when it enters the graveyard, regardless. Um, as long as it enters from the battlefield. So, Urza's Tower, they're going for Tron Mana next time. <sighs> Honestly, not a bad draw for us. Let's uh, go Sentinel's Eyes on the Core Spirit Dancer, just to get that extra point of damage across here. Uh, we'll go Hyena Umbra on the Bogle to buff him up. I kind of want this Rancor in hand in case we need to destroy an enchantment. Might as well disguise it in hand as well, right? Alright, so attack our opponent for 6. Not a great attack. We really haven't been all that aggressive, but we're going to force them to deal with Core Spirit Dancer here. If they do deal with Core Spirit Dancer, there's a chance we can recast Sentinel's Eyes from our grave. Oh man, Chromatic Sphere, so I get to 2 for 1 my opponent here. I mean, I'll take it. It's not it's not great, but I will take it. I kind of want that Rancor as well. Maybe it's bad. Oh, it's going on the Core cool Spirit Dancer here. Wow. I don't think it was, like, possible for us to draw worse than that off our core. And off our draw step, we just draw creature land. <clears throat> we'll leave this scout in hand. Casting it's bad. I, I think my force was bad. I think I needed to hold on to Rancor. I'm at the stage where, like, in a turn's time, I can just hard cast force of, force of Vigor anyway. Yeah, that was, like, terrible value. That was the biggest punt. <laughs> um... Like, I did... Okay, that's interesting. So we'll deal with the Death Touch Worm. The next Worm, which Life Links, will uh, get a Totem Armor effect off of us. We'll deal 8 to them, though, and they'll gain 3 life. Hmm... Alright, well, they're not just slamming an Ugin or an Ulamog, so that's really good news for us. Um, yeah. So opponent was just inquiring about Totem Armor, um, obviously on the Hyena Umbras.
All right, so opponent has enough mana to crack an O-Stone here. Really, that's not very good for us. Um, let's attack with a Core Spirit Dancer and make them have it. We There's no point throwing away this Slippery Bogle. Um, Core Spirit Dancer is going to die regardless. I think... Yeah. Oh, they lose their worm? Really? Oh, okay, right, because, yeah, it's a thing. Gotcha. I know I know the way magic works. Let's get rid of these high numbers in case they've got some sort of wacky surgical extraction. Um... This is really stalled out to a point where I don't want the game to be, though. Uh, and we are in a lot of trouble. I probably should have left the Sentinel's Eyes in the graveyard, actually. In case we draw his Core Spirit Dancer in this next turn. Um, mm. And they get to sack Sanctum Bavugan for an Ulmog. Yeah, this is super bad. Our, like, best draw now is Damping Sphere. Assuming they get Ul Ulmog. Um... Man, this is this is a rough league. I haven't played super tight this game, but this league is so rough. GG. Alright, so I'm going to end this one here. Um, honestly, I think I'm just going to concede from the league here. I might just donate the game to someone um, and then concede from the league and fit in like an extra full league um, on the Friday. It's, it's not worth me playing out and not worth me giving a video over. So um, that's all I'm going to do. I, I might just... Um, Go over a bit of a quick deck tech before I do that, though. Uh, yeah, just just because that's what we normally do when we wrap up a leg. Um, I'm going to pause and restructure my deck list as well. Alright, uh, so this is the deck list, uh, obviously, that I ran. Um, I think maybe cutting down on Griff Spoons and adding in so many Spirit Mantles is a little bit knee-jerk. I, I think... I really want the full playset of Griff Spoon in the deck in, in most scenarios. I think I think the better split would be like one Sentinel's Eyes, one Spirit Mantle on top. Um, Path to Exile in the main deck sort of fine, as is Leyline. It's also sort of fine. I'm, I'm not hugely in love with the list at the moment. I think there's a lot of stuff that we're losing against, and I've altered the list a little bit too much, and... Because I've over-altered it, I've reduced my own consistencies in the more winnable matchups. So I'm trying to win like the more losable matchups, and I've altered my consistency in the more winnable matchups. And I think it's it's impacting and it's showing during the leagues. Um, and yeah, honest, honestly, maybe I just also just move a path to the sideboard and. Ha have the two sentinels eyes in and just the one spirit mantle over there i think i think this is what i'll trial for the next league as far as the main deck is concerned um having there's a lot of lists that you know sort of run six flex slots and for me normally i run like four flex slots in the main deck um and six feels like a little bit too much. Like it's taking down my aura density just that little bit too much. Um, so I might try running uh, even... Even I might put one ley line in the side and two path in the main. And then that's a little bit of a nicer split there. Um, as far as ley lines to path are concerned. Um, Alright, so sideboard wise, I think suppression field... A little bit knee-jerk as well. I think Hushbringer is genuinely good right now. There is a lot of 
uh, Skyclave Apparition running around, and you do need a game plan against that card because that card is very, very good. And you like you need to be scared about that card because that card is ridiculous. Um, which leaves us with an extra flex slot as far as this is all concerned. Um, rest in peace, maybe. Teague, maybe. Damping Sphere, maybe. Um, Force of Vigor, maybe, as well. If you're worried about, like, Heliod combo, Dromoka's Command is a really good card against them because it makes them sack their enchantments, so they sack their Heliod. It's important to know. Um... Yeah, I might might have a think on the last aura. I'm gonna put a placeholder of rest in peace at the moment. I clicked on the wrong rest in peace there, and I think I might actually change out these force of vigors for seal of primordiums. or at least one for a seal of primordium. Um, like, I don't have as many green targets in my deck, and Force is kind of good, but it's also a liability. Like, you saw against my opponent there, I didn't have to misplay, I baited my own misplay uh, by throwing the Rancor. Obviously, I wasn't, like, pressed into doing anything that turn, I was just... I guess I got in my head that, like... If I kill the Worm Coil Engine, I'm six points closer to killing them. But that's not true because they have two jump blockers worth six toughness. Um, so maybe I had like a little bit of mental misstep um, and and just forced myself into a bad bad play. And obviously, like when Rancor would have won me the game on a Core Spirit Dancer as well, like that was just super super poor from me. Um, but yeah, this this is a list I'm gonna run going into the weekend. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it up and I'm gonna have a game with uh, with blue white for the Friday. I I am honestly enjoying blue white a lot more. Like, obviously it's something different, um, but also I think it's in a pretty decent place at the moment against a lot of things. Emrakul, I mean, obviously didn't do anything in the sideboard there, but if we verse mill, it's gonna come very in handy. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry this league was such a whitewash and, uh, probably not the most entertaining to watch, but I hope you learned something from it, got something out of it. Um, hopefully I did as well and that I can improve, uh, going into the next league, uh, tomorrow. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all next time.